Hi everyone again. So welcome back to another module of Oracle Apps TBA R12.2 training. And in this module, we are going to look at services in specific to the R12.2 and how do you start and stop those services. Now services have changed or there are some additional services that have been added in R12.2 with the introduction of Oracle Fusion middleware, specifically WebLogic, Oracle HTTP server and services related to the WebLogic node manager and managed servers. So all those things we are going to look in this module. But before we go, let's see what all things we are going to cover in this module for Oracle Apps TBA R12.2 training. So as I said just now, we'll start with services in R12.2 and as we covered or looked into module 1 and module 3 that Oracle eBusiness way there are two tiers, apps tier and database tier. So we're going to look at services, what all services are in apps tier, what are in database tier, and how do you start and stop services in each of these tier. Then we'll deep dive into application tier services, and then how these services are mapped into the context file. Now, probably you may not still know what is a context file, but this is will do a high level brief overview, but we'll go in detail about context file in subsequent module that is for auto config. Then we'll look at root service. This is newly introduced service in R12.2. Then we'll look at web administration service. Web, what is web logic domain means and administration part within that web logic domain. Then we'll look at web entry point. Then we'll look at web application services and specific to your OA core, OAFM, forms, C4WS, and then batch processing concurrent manager tier, then fulfillment server, followed by interaction server or IOE server, which we'll see later. Then we'll look at other services in specific mobile MWA. Then we'll check also how to start stop from the WebLogic console or the admin console in EBS R12.2. Then we'll look at the database tier services in specific to database tier server and the database listener. So let's start with what are services in Oracle eBusiness suite. Now, as you saw on the previous module, which was related to the file system, we saw that there are two tiers, application tier and database tier. So you need to start services both in application tier as well as database tier. So when you start the services, because application tier relies on the database, so you need to first ensure that services are started on the database tier and then you go and start services on application tier. Whereas if you need to stop services, you'll first go and stop services on application tier and then stop services on the database tier. So let's look at what all services are on application tier and how do you start and stop them. So the table on the right hand side of the screen sh shows the service group. So there are mainly these are the service groups in Oracle eBusiness Suite on the application tier. Now each service group will have some services and a service group may have one or more services and these services are controlled by service control script. So for example, this service will be controlled by this script. We are going to look at these scripts later in detail, but in R12.2 you have a root service and that root service is managed using a node manager or that root service group consists of a service called node manager. What exactly is node manager? Where exactly is this used? We'll see that in subsequent lesson when we go in more specific to that particular node or that particular service. Then you have a web administration. In that web administration group, you have one service that's WebLogic admin server. Then for web entry point service, you have two services. One is Oracle HTTP server and then Oracle HTTP server is managed by OPMN or Oracle process manager 
or Oracle Process Manager and Notification Server. So that's what you see OPM in Oracle Process Manager and Notification. Then you have Web Application Services. And in this service group, you have four services, one for OA Core, OAFM, Forms, and Forms C4WS. So as probably if you're coming from R12.1 or 12.0 background, you will know that or you know that there are OC4Js in that. On the previous version, there were Oracle container for Java, whereas in this 12.2, you have these servers, but these are deployed on something called as managed server that we'll see later what exactly is a managed server. Then you have batch processing service and batch processing service contains four services. TNS listener, which is also called as apps listener or the listener on the application tier. Then you have concurrent manager service and we have a dedicated module later about this concurrent manager. Then you have fulfillment server and Oracle ICSM or interaction server, which we'll see a little bit later. Then you have other services that consist of form server, but on a socket mode. We'll see or earlier we in the architecture we saw about forms in listener servlet and socket mode. But this is if you want to run your forms in a socket mode. And then you have Oracle MWA service, which is Oracle mobile web application service. So now let's look at what does theory mean or what does this mean? So as I said earlier, services on EBS R12.2 are defined in service groups. And then these service groups will have services. Now, one of these service is a singleton service where if you see web administration or web logic administration server is a singleton service. What does singleton service means is a service that can only run on at one server at a given point in time. So what you can have, let's suppose you have a node manager or you have this web application services or you have entry point to avoid single point of failure you could run in on two or more servers in active active mode however singleton services are the services that you can only run even though you have multiple servers you can't run them in active active mode you can only run them in active passive mode which means at any given point of time that service will be run only on one server. These sort of services are called as singleton service. So web administration or web logic admin server service is a singleton service. So as I said, web logic admin server is a singleton service. The Oracle eBusiness suite start and stop scripts are located inside the admin scripts home. So if you remember in the previous module, we looked at the environment variables and some of the file system. So admin underscore scripts underscore home is a variable. When we set the environment variable, that's when you will see, you will get this environment, environment variable field and that will point to the location or the directory in which all your start and stop scripts are in Oracle eBusiness Suite. So shortly, I'm going to log into Oracle eBusiness Suite application tier file system. We'll set an environment variable and then we'll go and check this location. So on this location, you will also find the individual scripts. So you run, you will have a script that will start and stop all the services in the application tier, or you will also have individual scripts. So you will have one script to start and stop node manager, second for weblogic admin server, HTTP server, and so on. So we'll see that as well. Then the script to start and stop all the services through a wrapper script. So you will have an option to start and stop all the services through this wrapper script, which I'm going to show you, which is called as AD stop all or AD start all. And this is just for application tier. So anything, any services in application tier can be or all the scripts within application tier, or all the services within application tier can be stopped and start with this one single script called AD stop all or AD start all. 
Now, if you want to start some managed servers or these applications, those can be started in parallel through the WebLogic console, or you can start from command line as we are going to see. So let's log into the server and show you the admin scripts location. And then I'll walk you through about all the scripts that are used to start and stop services in Oracle eBusiness Suite. So if you notice, I've connected to the server now Oracle eBusiness Suite. And in the previous modules, we installed this Oracle eBusiness Suite. And then later we looked at the file system in the previous module. Now here I've logged in as user APPL MGR that is logged in or that is used to install Oracle eBusiness Suite or the application tier of the Oracle eBusiness Suite was owned by this user. So the environment variable I've copied one from the actual location into user home. But let me take you to the actual location where you should find it. So which is under U01 Oracle and PRD 12.2. This is my Oracle base. So inside that I'll go into file system one and then EBS apps inside that APPL. So this is my Apple top and in that I'll have apps PRD 12.2 underscore EBS host name or my EBS. This is host name. This is apps is my apps and then PRD 12.2 or 12.2 was my SID. So from here to here, it's a context name. So this is the environment variable. I've copied this to my home folder. So it's easy to set. So I'm setting it here now. And then I go to admin scripts home. So this environment variable is set by setting this environment file on the Oracle eBusiness Suite application tier. So my admin scripts home is pointing to my instance top or in stop that we looked into the previous module. So inside that you have admin and scripts folder and this is where you have all the scripts. So if you see on right hand side here, I have ad start all. So this is a wrapper script that will start all these scripts. Then I have ad stop all, which is to stop all the services. Then you have other scripts like ad admin, which is to stop or start admin scripts. Then you have ADLN, which is a apps listener and so on. So this is how you will use these scripts AD stop all to stop all the services on application tier and AD start all to start all the services on application tier. Now we'll go and open these scripts and we'll run these scripts at a time to start and stop an individual component to see how do they behave. So head on to the next lesson where we go deep dive into all these scripts, what each of these scripts do, how do you troubleshoot if a specific startup script fails, where does these log files go and how do you control or in what order you should start these services. So head on to the next lesson where I'll see you in deep dive in on start and stop of Oracle eBusiness Suite application tier and then database tier. I'll see you in next lesson.